this demonstration, we will show you how to control downtime and simplify disaster recovery by setting up a data guard. We will begin with our Oracle Enterprise Manager homepage. I'll navigate to the Targets menu and then click on Databases. Here we can see the list of databases monitored in this Enterprise Manager repository. I'll select the database Ora Test, for which we want to set up Data Guard and then navigate into the database homepage. Click on the Availability menu and then select Add Standby Database. Here we provide the credentials to log in into the primary database. Then click on Login. As you can see, this wizard helps us to select the type of standby database we want to set up and the ways to set it up. The first option points to creating a fresh physical standby database, which is a block by block copy of the primary database. The second one helps us to create a new logical standby database. The third option assumes that you already have a standby database in place and you would want to manage that in the enterprise manager using data card broker. The last option allows you to simply take a database backup, which can later be used to set up data guard. Click on continue. Here we select the database backup type, which can either be online or offline. Online uses are meant to copy the backup files, whereas offline uses existing RMAN backup. Here we select the online backup and then click on next. In the backup options page, we define the degree of parallelism, which defines the speed at which the standby database is created. Next, we select the uh, primary database host credentials and the respective location for the primary database redo log files, and then click on next. Under database location tab, we provide the attributes for the standby database, such as the instance name, the database storage type, which can either be file system or ASM, followed by the host and the Oracle home location for the standby database. Finally, we select the database host credentials, which is required to create the standby database and then click on next. Under file locations tab, we provide the file directory structure. This location and the structure can be customized or kept as is similar to that of the primary database. Next, we select the listener name, which can either be an existing one or this workflow can create a new one with a desired port. Click on next. In the configuration tab, we provide the directory structure for the archive logs, followed by the standby database unique name, target name, and the standby archive location. For Enterprise Manager to monitor and manage the standby database, we can select the SysDBA credentials checkbox so that it can be managed from the database homepage. Also, we check on the data guard broker with which the standby database will be managed. Click on next. In the final review page, we get to see all the information provided for the data guard creation. Click on finish to submit the job to create the standby database. Click on view job to see the progress of the standby creation. As we can see, after some time, we can see the data guard is set up successfully. Let's now navigate to the database targets homepage and click on database where we can see the physical standby database appearing in the targets list. Let's now try to perform a switchover activity from the primary to the standby database. Click on the physical standby database and then navigate to the home page. Click on the availability menu and then click on data guard administration. Here we provide the credentials for the standby database and then click on login. This takes us to the data guard administration page where we can see the data guard status the production mode, and also the lag between the primary and the standby database. Now let's go ahead and perform switch over by clicking on the switch over button. Let's select the host credentials for the standby database. Next, we provide the credentials for the primary database and then click on continue. We then provide the final confirmation to initiate the switch over to the standby database. 
here we can monitor the progress of this switchover activity. It begins with the role change, it followed by the restart of the standby database, and we wait for the switchover to get over. And we can see the activity is now complete. As we can see here, the switchover is completed successfully, and we see that the previous standby database is now the primary database. Let's now navigate to the ta database targets homepage. To conclude, in this demo, you saw how easily an user can set up and manage data card using Oracle Enterprise Manager, which can help you handle plan or unplanned downtime and ensure business continuity. Thank you.